Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better at Aquavita. Visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. J360 Radio. Hello, J360 Legion, and welcome to the J360 Mini Bites here on J360 Radio, hosted by JM Brady. I am your host, JM Brady. Let's get into it. Hey, how's it going, J360 Legion? What is happening? This is J Man, of course, and we are here with the episode 181 of the Mini Bites. And I gotta let you guys know this last week was stellar. We came in, we killed, we kicked ass. Oh, yeah! That's what it is. Make a statement, baby. And not only that, we even took jams and we had it simulcast with J360 TV. That's pretty awesome, right? And there'll be plenty more of that to come. You just stay tuned and keep on waiting, all right? Uh, but hey, I don't want to dive too much into that. As you know, the mission must continue, and there is quite a bit of stuff coming your way. But I do want to say this. You know, I took the time to actually go see some movies not too long ago. Remember The Last Voyage of the Demeter? That that movie that was it was marketed, but I don't think it was marketed as well as it should have been because I, I don't know, man. I mean, people did not really get to see it, but I took me and my father to go see this movie because I was like, hey, you know, this would be a good time for me to spend with my dad, and you know, we both love monster movies, so it was like it was just perfect. And you know, that Sunday afternoon, you know, we were just sitting right there, we were on the voyage with the crew, and let me just tell you this, they went through some hell with Dracula and that. Like, they went back to the old origins, too. Like, you know, like how, like, if you show, like, a vampire across in a standard movie, you know, they flinch and back away. And the crew had crosses, but Dracula did not skip a beat. He was hungry. You understand what I mean? Papa was hungry. <laughs> Blood, guts, nothing was spared at all. And not only that, it had the atmosphere. At- it's a good film, you know what I mean? In a world surrounded by superheroes, pop cultures, and all this other stuff. Even though Dracula's pop culture, so I'm... I don't know why the hell people didn't go see this, but maybe it was um, marketed at the wrong time. I mean, for some reason, they try to shoehorn anything in August, but from what I got out of it, it was fun. It was fun on the high seas. We need more, like, I'm telling you, we need more action-adventure films like that. That was pretty cool, you know. I- I'm sure they're out there, but for some reason, well, you know the reason, I know the reason. They don't get as much attention as they should, and that's a damn shame. Much like Westerns, much like... There's a there's a spot for every genre, and for some reason, like I said, they want to be as myopic as possible with every bit of meaty consumption we have. And maybe the film probably would have done better on streaming. I don't know. I think it would have done better with a theatrical release... And let's just say around last, uh, let's say um, late September, early October, or late October. You know what I mean? Mid October, something like that. You gotta fit the vibe for it. That's what I'm saying. But hey, I already got something planned for that whole little timeline, you know. And I'm dropping notes to you guys every day. Real J360 fans know what it is. I'm not gonna announce it right now. But moving into our feature presentation, though, uh, yeah, so. I also took the time to rewatch some Disney classics. And let me just tell you this. As many times I say, like, yeah, I just want to scare the hell out of Disney. I just want to show Disney some competition and all. You know, the thing about it is, yeah. Because at the end of the day, Disney is too damn big to fail. You know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like WWE back in the day where WWE had no competition. And, like, they just did whatever they wanted to. They didn't even care about giving you a good product. They just know you couldn't go anywhere else except for, like, New Japan. But then, like, everything else started coming back, like, you know, the road shows, the indie shows, and all that kind of stuff. And they started being profitable because it gave you something different. But WWE didn't care because these things didn't have, like, televised moments on their scale. And, like, AEW came in. This is before, like, all the other crazy shit with AEW, you know? But now they know that they're starting to get some competition, so they start acting right. See what I'm saying? That's what you got to do to certain companies. And, you know, Disney is no exception to this rule, which is why I'm always like, yeah, let's do something. Let's scare the hell out of them. Let's go on ahead and make them act like a real company again. 
Because these live action remakes, man, they're just soulless husk banked off of nostalgia to the point where it's like, you know what? Of course they're not going to try, we're not going to care, and everything's all disillusioned. But, as I said before, when I went back and I watched the animated classics, and I watched, like, the Snow White feature, and I was like, yeah, this is timeless, this is great. You know what I mean? Like, it had everything. It had, like, love, it had music, it had passion, it had romance, it had, like, well, I already said love, right? But, you know, like, romantical situations where the seven dwarves were coming to put a stop to the peddling woman and all, who they did not know was the evil queen, but... Like, it had sentimental value, and, like, you could tell, like, from what they had going on and working with what, what they did, it was a lot put into this movie. It was beautiful. Well done, even. And, yeah, they took it out of public domain and all that other stuff. We could talk about the controversies of Disney another time, but there's, like, thousands of channels to do that. What I'm saying is, like, watching this film, it's like, it aged beautifully. And, you know, some of those things that took place in the movie are still prevalent today. Like, I don't know what it is nowadays about people having a hard time understanding, like, a prince and a princess coming together. Or, like, you know, a man doing for a woman. Or, like, basically people helping each other out. Or, you know, like, knowing that people that are in your family can be very treacherous and try to do away with you if you let them. Like, there are so many things about this movie that are still relevant to today that when whoever's playing the new Snow White, like... What is her name? Rachel Zelger or um, Ziegler? Ziegler is her name. And she was in, like, West Side Story. I remember that. Oh, yeah, Spielberg's greatest push there. I mean, look, I can't knock the man for trying, but still, like, really? But you see, now you look at her, and she, she's worse than Brie Larson. She's like the second coming of Brie Larson, pretty much, saying all that stuff she's saying. And I'm like, how in the hell is this person... No, 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 what, what, what is this? And then she had the nerve to talk about she's not bleaching her skin to be like Snow White. I'm like, were people expecting you to do that? And then, you know, Gal Gadot is the evil queen, and I think that's perfect casting there. But you also can see in the interviews that Gal Gadot is a lot more refined, know exactly how the business works, and she speaks when she needs to, and, like, you know, she stays about the movie. Whereas, like, Rachel Zelger... <laughs> Let's just call her that. I I can't. I don't even care to think of her last name. Wherever her, she's around. She just yakety yakety yakety. Oh oh, feminism, feminism. Dump the pakey archery and all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, here we go with this nonsense again. And not only that, she's over there saying, I don't know. We don't have a prince. She's gonna find herself becoming the leader she's meant to be that her father told her she could be. And I'm like. Oh, so in other words, the term princess doesn't mean leadership, right? So, so, but wait, wait, her father told her she could be a leader, right? So isn't that kind of, you see, you see the joke from these psychopaths when they come around her saying this stuff? And the fact that this woman is doing this stuff and just becoming a PR nightmare is unbelievable. But you know what, though, it's like this. Somebody in Disney thought that she was a draw and picked her for this. Somebody thought that she was going to be the next big thing and, pick, and, and picked her for this. So, like, what the hell, casting agency. But also, <laughs> you know, when Hal Bailey became Ariel, she wasn't, she wasn't nowhere near like this. Now, she also had to deal with creepy, um, racist shit. But the thing is, like, she was nowhere near as bad as this. And at the end of the day, it's all about freedom of choice. You can go see these movies if you want to. But it's just like, if anything else, like, why is this woman dumping down on Snow White and just acting like she hates the role and everything? I'm like, that's your job. Isn't it amazing how actors are all doing this stuff and all these strikes happening? But you got this complete ass clown over here dissing the current job that she's supposed to work on. And not only that, it's not even Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Peter Dinklage saw an end to that and then somehow still had the nerve to be Toxic Avenger. What a wild time we live in, y'all. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. If I was in charge of PR for, like, Disney and all, oh, the, the actress ain't saying nothing about her personal feelings or anything. Keep it about the movie. And even then, with the whole idea of no prints in the movie and stuff, what is it about women nowadays that hate men so much to the point where they will not allow men to even be on the movies and stuff? What is the problem going on here with relationships and all that jazz? Like, relationships aren't the issue. 
Relationships are what you form and what you make. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, you might just be a terrible person. I mean, if, you, if it ain't working out and all that kind of stuff, if everybody's a problem, all right, you got to look inwards and see, like, what is it about you that causes all these things? Because it could be you. I mean, dare I say it. I mean, I could go all the time talking about people I have disagreements with. I could talk about, like, how crazy society is. But at the same time, I have to also look at myself before I can judge anybody else. That's usually how that goes. Because at the end of the day, you'll realize a lot of people who you bring in your life sometime, they're representations of you to a point. Extensions of you. You'll see stuff of you coming out of them. You know what I mean? You got to think about that mirror image sometime. Even when you have kids and stuff like that, when you take them to go see these movies, like those of you took your kids to go see Barbie and all that kind of stuff, the context of the film, did you have to talk with them about this film before you went ahead and did certain things? God only knows how you parent. I'm not a parent yet, so I don't know. But it's just like, if anything else, this movie right here, what exactly are you teaching people? Because as far as I know, Snow White is being pursued by... A woman who is her stepmother who is jealous of her looks. That pretty much is the central part. I mean, if anything, like, the queen stripped her of everything and made her a maid. It's in the beginning of the movie. You know? Like, I, I don't know if she's seen this thing. Oh, well, no. She went on record to say, I've seen Snow White and I'm scared of Snow White. Then why the hell? Give up the role to somebody who wants to be there. Like, there are lots of actors and actresses and people out there that want to actually be a part of the industry and, and would love to do this. Yeah, they might have reservations. They might have complaints about things, but they want to be there. It seems like these people that are out there striking are the ones that are tired of the industry, tired of this, tired of that. And then at the same time, they want you to feel sorry for them every time something doesn't go their way. And, like, professional victimhood is, is so unattractive and disgusting. And, well, you know, it's like this. If you want to give up so bad and go home or go back to Oklahoma or wherever the hell you came out of, good. By all means, leave. So that somebody else who actually would appreciate the role, make it the best role they could, will enjoy it and build a successful career. You know? It's like this. You got a lot of these people, they do this stuff. If it's so bad, why don't you fucking leave? And then you know what? They're not going to because for some reason they got they got to find opposition with everything. So when you point out logic and facts like that to them, they'll go ahead and say, "Well, you tell me, me, you tell me, me." And they'll, they'll go all on this tangent. But as soon as you melt them down, it's the most beautiful feeling ever because that's the truth. And you see it in a lot of these message boards all the time. You might as well call them message boards. Any of this social media stuff, you've seen it before. It's pretty much a giant forum that got popular and somebody sold it to you on the cheap. And you're the product on it, because every time you use it. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you more about it in the J-Man show, don't you worry. But it's like, when you think about it, from time to time, you got the role that lots of little girls grew up playing. You know what I mean? Lots of little girls love Snow White, lots of little boys love the Seven Dwarfs. A lot of people, in general, grew up with that movie, and they never had a problem with it. Nowadays, oh, everything's problematic, everything's racist, everything's sexist, and all that stuff. By the way, that nutcase is gone now. Yeah, yeah, Sarkeesian is done, or something like that. Like, I, I don't believe it entirely, because I notice like, when people start doing that stuff where, I'm retired, I'm done, and they go away, people start paying attention and looking over in that direction. I'm sure it's all that all that cred comes back up. Her stupid ass will be floating back over again. And it's a fact, too. You know? It's so sad. But what it is is that, like, I don't want to go see this movie, but I look at these Disney movies, and I'm like, man, we really fell off because the imagination, the magic, the adventure, all that stuff is still there. Like, even when you play Kingdom Hearts, it's still there, but damn. I got to get to work. And a lot of you other independent creators, we got to get to work. We got to go ahead and change the landscape of this. Otherwise, we're going to be careening to an area where we can never come back. And that's not good. You know what I mean? Just letting you all know. But hey, let me go ahead and run your schedule down. All right, so you got the mini bites happening now. You got the J-Man show happening tomorrow. You got the power play happening on Thursday. And then you got, let's see, what is happening Friday? Well, huh, I think we may use the mystery box on that one. I'll run it on Instagram or J360TV by Thursday and you guys will see.
as for our talk, guys, yeah, we need to go get back to work. And by the way, those of us that create don't take the time to become critics. Let's just create, okay? Because mainstream studios definitely do not give a damn, and they are not doing right by people around here. We can do it better than they can. You hear me on this? And if you don't believe me, well, you're going to have to stay tuned to J360 Productions. All right? <laughs> this is J-Man signing off. Y'all take care of yourselves. Be back tomorrow. Peace. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more.